Good evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good evening, everybody. And happy testimony Tuesday to everybody. We pray that God has given you a great day today, in spite of what the enemy might have tried to do. Amen. Praise God. You've been victorious. We're going to pray. We're going to listen to some music because we know that God is not dead. We're going to be talking about three more parts of the nature of God. I want you to have your pencils, your pens, or whatever you use to do what you do. Amen. Praise God. We ask that you have it. Amen. Hey, glory to the name of Jesus. We, God bless you, Sister Lynn. Um, get your Bibles ready. <clears throat> We're going to go into quite a few scriptures. We're going to learn about El Shay, El Chul, and El Day. Amen. These are names that you know they usually hear about, but we're going to find out what they are, what part of the character or the nature of God it is, and then we're going to go and, and, and see what God's going to do with it. Amen. We're going to pray. God bless you, Providence. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything that you've done, everything that you're going to do, everything that you're doing. You have been fantastic to us, even though the enemy tries us. But, Lord, we are victorious because we have Jehovah Nisi as our banner. And we know that you're always present as Jehovah Shema. We thank you for being our battle fighter as El Shaddai. We glorify you, O oh God. You're a way maker and a provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. We ask now, God, that you take full control and anoint our ears and our minds and our hearts and our eyes and our mouth to do what they're supposed to do for your glory. To hear, to understand to see clearly, to speak the truth, and to accept your word in our hearts. And Lord, we ask that you forgive us for all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and even blood guiltiness. And we give you glory and we give you honor because we know that you are the living God. And we thank you for that in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Yes, God's not dead. Yes. You can get a shout on it if you want to. Hey. I don't know about you, but he's the worst of Jesus today. Yes, yes. That God is not dead. He is yet alive. Bless the name of the Lord. Uh, we're going to start out um, tonight with the name, the nature of God, uh, the name El Shay. And it's C-H-A-Y. Amen. The L-E-L. -E Praise God. And we're going to talk about him because we're going to start out with that. That's why I picked this song, The Living God. <clears throat> we 
when we pray, like I said, we don't pray to the names, but we pray to the character of God. This is the nature of God. This is this is how we get to know his what he will do and what he won't do. Um, we get to understand how he did and why he did. There's some things that the Lord has done for those in the Bible that he's still doing for us today, but we don't ask because we think, well, that was just Old Testament or that's just in the Bible for them. Uh, we've got preachers that say, and they didn't invite me back to the Bible College in Philadelphia College of Bible, but they they say that um, the Holy Ghost there's no more speaking in tongues. The the Holy Ghost that was for them in the upper room in Acts two and four. But I also recall that Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost, and I also recall there was a centurion that was filled with the Holy Ghost, and I, and so we recognize that that was wrong. And when they realized that was wrong, they left me alone. So we, we know that God is still moving. He's still alive. There are times where we, we go through so many things. There's so many things that grab our attention. Um, I was sharing with, I don't know if she's on yet, but I was sharing with one of our sisters, Sister Dorothea. Thank you again, uh, Bridget, for putting us back together. And there were so many things that were going on. And, and one of the things that I say, and I, and I tell folks all the time, when you contact me and when you ask me stuff, if you don't want to know the answer, please don't ask me. If you don't want it to be a biblical answer, please don't ask me. And, and that'll save everybody some time. Praise God, because I'm a stickler for the word of God. I, I don't care who doesn't like it. I can't help it. It was here before I got here. I, I have to say the truth because it's the truth that makes people free. And so we're going to talk about El Che. Amen. Praise God. That is the living God. That's what it means, the living God. And, 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 and there was a time when people were in the Old Testament, people were beginning to buy all kinds of expensive materials to make themselves gods. It, I, I, I'm always curious about how people think if you who are fallible, you who make mistakes, you who mess up need a God, but you make that God. I don't understand how that God that you made is going to be able to save you because you can't save yourself, but that you made that God. And people pray to these things. We got people that pray with crystals. I, I don't understand the saints that still play with horoscopes. I, I, I Somebody will explain that to me and I'm not trying to be funny. Because the Bible teaches us against certain things. Um, when it was talking about the Magi, they were wise men. They were following the star because that had to do with the Messiah. But these things with, I'm a Pisces, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Gemini, I'm a Taurus, and the Taurus shouldn't talk to a Sagittarius. Sagittarius needs to leave a Virgo alone in the Taurus. It's just, I don't understand how, how we allowed ourselves to be partakers with the heathen. God always tells his people, don't partake of the things that the heathens do. Don't mess with their gods. Don't mess with their traditions. Don't do what they do. I have made you a peculiar people. I want you to be different because I am the living God. These things can't hear you. These, these, these things that you do, that, that, that's not going to save you. I'm giving you a pattern. I'm giving you a protocol. I'm giving you direction. And, and to save our lives, we are Israel, we are Israel, we are Israel. The more God does, the more we go to the left. Amen. And, and now it's time for us to get to a point where we say, you know what? I'm going to do right if I don't have no friends. I'm going to do right if some of my family members don't like me. I'm going to do right because there's going to come a time we all, every last one of us, is going to accept the fact that the Lord is the Lord because we're going to have to stand before him. And the Bible said every knee is going to bow. Satan himself, Lucifer, amen, going to have to bow down and say that Jesus is the Lord. Ooh, what a day. Glory to God. So we recognize that, that these people were doing this and they provoked the El Shay. They, they provoked the living God to anger. Their false gods were designed and they were beautiful to look at, and, and, and but they were deaf, dumb, and blind. They couldn't do anything because they weren't alive. Jeremiah 10 and 10, I'm using King James. I'll be in King James and Geneva. Um, 
King James says, but the Lord, the, the Adonai, remember him as the Lord or the master. Amen. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, the El Shay, and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be able to abide in his indignation or his anger. In another story, when, when, when Israel's king uh, saw that they wanted so bad, and his army were hiding, they, they were just kind of in the, in the trenches because they were scared of Goliath. The, I tell you, wanting to be a leader, I, I don't understand that either. I, I really don't. Um, those that know me know that what I'm doing now is not something that I wanted to do. This was not in my, not in my wildest dreams. Amen. Praise God. Choirs, music, yes. Preaching, teaching, absolutely not. Amen. Praise God. Titles, absolutely not. I'm good with who I am. Amen. But God has a way that's mighty sweet. And he does what he wants to do the way he wants to do it. And the Lord does not need us. And I, I really can't say that enough. God does not need us. He wants us. And he loves us enough, enough to allow us to be partaking in the things that he does. He doesn't leave us ignorant. Um, I, me and DJ laugh sometimes. I said because God gets us out of situations and away from places just before the disaster hits or troubles hits or sickness hits. He takes us out. It could be a month later. It could be a week later. But as soon as we're out of there, it, it, it's like God is saying, you know, sometimes y'all don't pay attention. And sometimes I got to let you, remind you that I am alive. So I'm going to let you stay here for a minute. But when trouble is getting ready to come, I'm going to remove you out of the situation. So you can look back and say the living God brought you out. So here's the situation. Now they provoked the Lord. And, and now we, we've got um, um, Goliath doing all this boasting. One man, amen, doing all this boasting. And everybody's scared of him. Saul included. Praise the name of Jesus. But... One young man stood up in pure faith. Whew, can we get just one young man, young woman, to stand up in pure faith and really live for God, live in holiness? Praise God. You cannot mix the world. You can't mix the secular with... with I don't know how many times I've got to say that. You can't mix the secular with holy. It You can try because there are singers that have gospel, so-called singers that have done so. You, you're mixing it together. But what is happening is you're sending up strange fire. I don't care if it's your birthday, your anniversary, the church's anniversary. You don't incorporate worldly music into the house of God. Where's the respect? Where's the reverence that we used to give God? Where's the holiness that we used to? Where's the fear of God? That I'm not putting that in there. I would rather be in there and the ceiling fall on us. Oh, no, we're not playing that. Praise God. But because of grace. And because it seems like we're getting away and we're getting in by with so many things, people are not paying, oh, that it's all right because God ain't say nothing about it. it. It's all right. But the, the word of God says, come out from among them. Be separate. I don't want you to do what they do. Yeah, it looks like fun now. But when you stand before God and the Lord tells you enter in and then folks that were so-called having fun, he says, depart. Ain't no fun then. Praise God. It's fun until it's not fun. And we have to understand, like I told the sister that I was talking to, I said, everything that we're experiencing now is temporary. Your feelings about whomever, that's temporary. There's nothing and nobody, no person, place, or thing worth your soul. I don't care how sweet, I don't care how nice, how fine, I don't care how much they talk. If they, man, you want to you wanna learn something about somebody with a silver tongue? Read the Song of Solomon. Brother could talk. He knew how to put that poetry together. Bless the name of Jesus. But there's not one person, place, or thing that you should put in the place of God because he's the living God and he said, my name is jealous. I'm a jealous God. Not jealous the way we are, that, that is catty, but, but he's jealous in the sense that I, I, I created you. I, I'm, I'm your Elohim. I created you and I don't want you to fool around and get messed up with Satan because that's his job. So I get jealous for you. I don't want you with nobody else. I'm God. I want you to pay me some attention. So here that we got the 
in the trenches. Amen. And and, and this is what, I love David. This is what David said. First Samuel. First Samuel 17 and 36. I told y'all need some pens today. Amen. First Samuel 17, 36. King James Version. He said, Thy servant, this, this is David talking. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine. Now, he used the word uncircumcised because circumcision was, was a mark that they had. It, it was something that would separate God's people from the heathens. So basically, he's calling Goliath a heathen. You don't even belong to God. And this is where I tell people, stop going around telling people everybody's a child of God. Everybody is not a child of God. Satan has some children. If you don't believe me, look it up in your Bible. Does the devil have children? Google it. Where does it say in the Bible that, that the devil has children? It will come up. Jesus even said, you are children of the devil. Your father, the devil. When we say our father, we have been born again. There are some people that say our father and he's not their father. The, the Bible says that, that they're bastards and not sons. They're trying to come in without actually accepting the Christ. They want to get to God without Christ. He said, I'm the door. I'm the way. There ain't no other way. There's no other door. Anybody come another way? You're a thief and a robber. So he says, yes, I'm jealous for you. And, and David remembered all this. He said, this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. You messing with God's army. You messing with El Shai, his, his army. Don't mess with that part of the nature of God. He's the living God. Glory to the name of Jesus. Then there was Sennacherib, that name right there, king of, of, of Assyria, who sent a letter to King Hezekiah boasting about all of his victories. Bless the name of Jesus. And that's going to be in 2 Kings, the 19th chapter, verses 10 through 16. 2 Kings 19, 10 through 16. And, and he was taunting. He, he, he was laughing and talking to Hezekiah. And I'm giving it to you in our language. And he was boasting about, yeah, you 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 think you believing in this God? I've I've, I've defeated other kings, and and they gods didn't help them. So so hey, I'm gonna send. Let me send Hezekiah a letter and shake him up a little bit, and just remind him who I am. I'm Shinatarim. I I'm the 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 king of Assyria. I don't play. I don't play with none of their gods because the gods ain't got no power. I've defeated those kings. Well, he sent this letter to to. Hezekiah, but the mistake that Sennacherib had made was putting Hezekiah's God in the same category as the gods of the heathens. And in 2 Kings 19, verse 10, verse 16, it says, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, this is the king of Assyria speaking, saying, Let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive you. Don't be fooled by your God. Let not thy God in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah, I love this. Hezekiah didn't go to the prophet. Hezekiah didn't go to, to, to the, the captain of, of his army. Hezekiah didn't go to the priest. Hezekiah said, I'm going to get by myself and I'm going to handle this. And for those of you that are asking God for something, this is going to show you how to ask in your private room. He said, and Hezekiah received the letter at the messenger's hand and read it. And he went in, up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. That same letter that was boasting about what Hezekiah's God couldn't do and was bragging on all of the kings that had and kingdoms that had been defeated by the king of Assyria, he took the letter. He wasn't going to repeat it and, and, and have to go verbatim. He put the letter right before God, said, God, you can read this yourself. And, and, and that's where the El Roi showed up, praise God, because he's the God that sees. God saw the letter when it was written. He saw the letter when he put it before him. And he says, and, and I love this, and he said, he spread before the Lord, in verse 15, he said, And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubim, 
Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. You are the creator, the Elohim. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. He's asking God something in his nature. God, I want you to see me. Remember, Hagar said, he is the God that sees me. He is that El Roi. I, he sees me. He knows my aches. He knows my pain. He knows my fears. He knows when I'm, 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 I'm really saying what I mean, but he knows what's actually in my heart. Glory to God. He, he said, listen, bow down your ear, ear and hear. Open up your eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib. That's the name boy. Which has set him to reproach the living God. Hezekiah said, it ain't about me. And it's not even about, about Judah. But he coming up against you. Because God, when he come up against you, praise God, he's coming up against us, but he's using us to get to you. I, I was talking to the Lord in my room and I was sitting there talking to the Lord. I had the, all the shades up and I was looking up into the sky and I was like, you know, God, people don't understand that when they curse a child of God, when they come up against a child of God, I don't care if they have a title or not. I don't care if they're just newborn into the kingdom. Amen. When you come up against one of God's children, you got to beware of the consequences. And I always tell people, if you don't believe me, go to the book of Acts. You can go to Exodus too, but you go to the book of Acts and you can find out if Ananias and Sapphira could come back and testify to you. They tell you point blank. I do believe they tell you, don't mess with the people of God because they thought they were just talking to Peter because that's what they saw. They saw the outward shell. But the Bible, you lied. Peter said, you ain't lied to me. You lied to the Holy Ghost. In other words, you lied to the Lord God that's on the inside of me, the living God that's on the inside of me. That's who you lied to. And, and both of them wound up dead. And the sad part about it, they didn't have to lie. All they had to do was tell the truth, no, we only want to give this much and, and, and we want to keep the rest. And Peter said that would have been fine. If you didn't want to give a dime, that would have been fine because it was yours all the time. But it's some about folk that, that think they can get by just because they're looking at a human individual, just because they see human frailties. or or Because I'm quite sure they heard the story of Peter rejecting uh, 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 the Lord and, and all of that's in the mind. You know, oh, there ain't nobody but Peter. Yeah, he got some power, but there ain't nobody but Peter. But they died. You don't mess with God's children. He said, you bring this reproach on the living God. Hezekiah knew that the other king's man made God couldn't help them, but he didn't trust in their gods. He trusted in El Shek. I want you to remember that. When you're praying and you're talking to the living God, you're talking to that nature of of God that's alive, that nature of God that moves, that nature of God that breathes. That this, and when I say breathes, amen, he breathes into us. Bless the name of the Lord. And, and, and so he said, only people that can help him at that time was the living God. And that was the El Shay. Judah didn't have no strength to beat these folks, but El Shay is alive and a faithful protector. He's not absent. Amen. So, in a way, El Roi, the God who sees, El Shaddai, the God that fights, that one that's a mighty warrior, the mighty God, and El Shay kind of blended in together in that nature of God. And God stepped in and won the situation over for Judah and Hezekiah. Bless God. One of the things that we have to learn as children of God we have to be persistent in our prayer. Some of us, we pray things for a couple of days and then we say, oh, I ain't do nothing, so I'm going to quit. Well, then you just lost out. Because Daniel waited 21 days. Amen. He, almost, he waited almost a month before he got an answer. The first time he prayed, the Bible declares the first time that he prayed, God heard him. The first time he prayed, the angel had to remind him. God heard you the first time you prayed. When you opened up your mouth and set your, your mind to heaven, God already heard you. I got held up. He was sending me with an answer. But I, I use the word Jack. He There was a, the prince of Persia, there was one of those fallen angels, them demons, held me up. 
Try to jack me. I got your answer, but I'm trying to get to you. And now I got to fight with this rascal. And while I'm fighting, it, it's like 21 days. We still going through the battle. And evidently, God said, it's enough. Let me send some reinforcements. He said, Michael. Michael handled the situation. Michael was about business. Glory to God. Michael handled the situation. And, and then here comes Gabriel with the answer. So don't give up when you're praying. Be persistent in your prayer. I don't care if you pray the same thing over and over for three, four months to a year. You keep being persistent on that thing. And you keep saying, God, you said it in your word. You said that you're my El Shaddai. You will fight. You said you're my El Shay. You said that you're the living God. God, you are Elohim. You're creator. You will create a situation. And God, you will deal with me and create and be a clean heart and a right spirit. So I'm coming to you with all your nations combined, everything in your nature combined. I'm learning of who I'm dealing with. I'm learning about who I'm talking to. I'm learning about who I say I believe in because God is good. That's that's fine. But who is God? And he said, I am that I am. Who is that I am? Now we find that he is El Roi, the God that sees. El Shaddai, the God is mighty. And El Shea, glory to God, all of those are the nature of God. Not natures, but the nature of God. Let's look at and King James again. Let's look at Deuteronomy 32 verse 18. 32, verse 18. Oh, glory to God. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful and hast forgotten God that formed thee. Geneva Bible. Thou hast forgotten the mighty God that begot thee and hast forgotten God that formed thee. The living Bible. They spurned the rock who had made them forgetting it was God who had given them birth. This brings us into the name of El Shul. And you spell that C-H-U-W-L. Amen? El Shul. He's the God that birthed us. Can I say what? He gives us life. He gives us strength. But he's birthed us into into his his kingdom. He's birthed us into his likeness. He's birthing us into his image. And we're still being birthed. There's, there's a birthing going on in us until we actually begin to look like the Lord. Not that we, his features, but there's so much of his glory in and on us coming through us that we mirror who he is. That's where we're headed. We, we're, we're not just sitting there and saying, well, now I'm saved. I'm just waiting for Jesus to come. No, there's things that we have to do. We got to learn him. It is a, it, it, it is a fool. Uh, uh, first of all, it says there's no God. But this person is really idiotic if you get in a relationship with somebody and don't know nothing about them. Nothing about them. You barely know their name. Nothing about them. You need to understand the character. This is why I tell folks, the saints of God don't fall in love. That's nonsense. The saints of God learn to love because you learn the individual. I didn't fall in love with God. I don't even like that song. I keep falling in love with him. No, I don't. I mean, you sing it. That's your business. I don't like the song. So if I ever have to be somewhere, please don't ask me to sing that. Amen. I, I would say I, I have learning to love the Lord over and over again. Every day I learn something new about him. I ask the Lord every time I come on live, God teach me something that I did not know or refresh my mind on the things that I did and might have forgotten. And, and then Lord teach them, the people that watch things that they don't know or that they have forgotten so that we can remember who you are. It's a sad state of affairs where we can just walk up to God and say, well, God, you know I need you to move. Okay, what's his character in that? How does he move? Do you have any idea will he move in that situation? Is it a situation that lines up with the word of God? Can you find it in the word of God? If you can find it in the word of God, say, God, you did it here, and you have no respect of person, so if you did it here, then you can do it again. And and we have to understand what whatever God said to, to Moses, whatever he said concerning Jeremiah, um, Isaiah, Jacob, Abraham, whatever he said, praise God to them. That's part of who we are. That's his nature. We can come to him, praise God, in the same nature that they went to him in because they were human just like we were. It wasn't no special. They didn't have no 
magic and, and all this extra stuff on the inside of them. Watch this. Moses wasn't even filled with the Holy Ghost, but yet Moses had a face-to-face -face with God, as they would say. God talked to him face-to-face. -face. It, it, it was one of those things where, where even today, folk talk about they know God and God talking to them. I've never seen so many confused folk that go to church in my life. These folk don't know what they're called to do. They don't know where they're called to be. They don't know what they're called to be. They just follow in suit because somebody said this is a good name. Somebody said this is a good time. So, and, and nobody's actually finding out, is this part of what God wants me to be according to his character? If I'm going to mirror God, and when I say that, that means reflection. If I'm going to mirror him, if I'm going to walk in holiness, if I'm going to have his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, then I'm going to have to make some changes in what I do, who I socialize with, where I plant seeds, where I plant myself. I'm going to have to be careful. I have to guard my spirit. I have to guard my soul. And God knows I got to guard my body. So, Lord, I need you to show me because you're the living God. But now I also need you to birth me into some things. There's some things I was born into. I was born into the family that got serious sense of humor. Amen, praise God. I was born into that. But but now there, there's a time where I need to be birthed into something different. I need to come up higher in some stuff. And it don't make a difference what, what title you got. You can be a chief prelate. You can be a chief apostle. You can be a, a, a what I started to say, a main cool. You can be, a, um, a, I can't even think of the name now, a, a primate. You can be all of these things that you want to be. But until you have a personal relationship with the personal God, and you know the personal nature of God. You really don't, it, it don't matter what you call yourself. It don't matter how much you, what you wear, how pretty your robes, your vestments, whether it wear on your head, if you carry a staff, if you get, whether, it don't make a difference if you sit on a, on a, on a throne in the pulpit. It don't make a difference. God, God ain't stuck none of that. That has nothing to do with salvation. The Lord is about us being saved and, and us that teach we, we can't get so high, holy-minded in the sense that we think we're so much better than everybody else and we look down on people and we talk down to people. That's why you hear me say we, amen? Even though I may not be sinning or practicing, I say we because at one time, we're all flesh. We've all come short of the glory of God. So I say we. We all have a past. We've all done some jacked up stuff. We've all fought some dirty stuff. And folk that say, I ain't never, you're, you're lying, the truth ain't in you. You thought some stuff, amen, that you shouldn't have thought. You looked at some stuff you shouldn't have looked at because that wasn't yours to look at. Bless the name of Jesus. And you did it. Amen. Or you said something you shouldn't have said. You used the language that was not a godly language. Whatever it was that you did, bless the name of Jesus. Now you're being born. You're being birthed. You need the El Shul. Glory to God. They had forgot about him. He said, you forgot the one who formed you. I formed you. It's like we forget when folk be playing with God. Do you recall that God formed you? He holds your heartbeat. He holds every breath. But you want to play with him? If that's not certifiable, I don't know what is. It said, they spurned God who made them, forgetting it was God who had given them birth. They had forgotten about El Shul, the God who birthed them. Genesis 1. If you go through the whole chapter of Genesis, and you know, sometimes I read stuff and then I have to go back over and say, you know, I saw that, but I never looked at it that way. Amen, praise God. And it's not a new revelation. It just opened my eyes to some things. I'm going to start at verse 26, chapter 1 of Genesis. The Lord, just a quick rundown, those of you that know the story. The Lord had created. He began to create things. There was nothing... And I told, I was talking to the Lord today and I said, my mind, I know what, what I know it's true. I, I have no problem with believing that. But my mind trying to go to who you are in the sense that you've always been here. There has never been anything before you. You have always been here. If, if that's not enough to make you tremble before God, I don't know what is. You have, God, everything, everything that we see, everything that we know has to have a beginning. But God, you are the beginning. There was nothing, there was no universe, 
or praying to the universe. The, the universe wasn't even here. Well, the universe needed to be made. That's why it created itself. You see how foolish that sounds? Amen. God has always been. He is the divine creator. He created some things. He, he set forth some things. And then he told the earth and the sea and the sky, bring forth, bring forth, bring forth. But when it came to man, glory to God, something happened. El Shul stood in. El, 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 um, Elohim, he was there to create, yes. But then that nature of El Shul stepped in. And that's the God who births. And then we find this in Genesis 1, 26. It says, further, this is what the Lord said. Further said, let us, the triune God, make man in our image according to our likeness and let them, watch this, wait now, let us make man, but let them. Why did God say it that way? Because when he knew he was forming Adam, Eve was already the part. She was already there. There's nothing that gets by God. I don't care if you don't believe he, he sees everything, knows everything, and sees where you go and hide and duck and whatever. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. It just is. Because he said, I am that I am. I just am. You cannot qualify me because I am. That you, you, can't, you can't deny me. You can't, you can't prove that I am. You can't prove that I'm not because I just am. He's that kind of God. Bless the name of Jesus. He said, listen. He said, make them in. I want them in my image, our image. And this is where we, we, we got jacked. But I started looking at this. He said, and let them, Adam and Eve, mankind, rule over the fish of the sea. We were supposed to have authority on every fish in the ocean. Every whale, every, 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 what they call killer whales, because it wasn't killer whale then because nothing was dying. And every whale, every swordfish, every barracuda, every, every blowfish, they call pufferfish, every piranha, they wouldn't eat nobody. We had control over all that in the sea. God gave us control over the things that were in the sea, the coral that was up underneath there. Oh my God, have mercy. The things that God had given us, glory to God. He said, let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the heaven and over the beast, over the beast and over all the earth. So he's given us authority over the sea, the heaven and the earth and over everything that creepeth and moveth on the earth. God command, here's the thing. God commanded the water and the earth to bring forth fowl, fish, cattle and other creatures. And that included dinosaurs, even though people don't want, they were still 20 billion years. No, mm -mm. when he created, he created them all. The dinosaurs at that time wouldn't eat nobody. Praise God. Everything was herbivores. They would eat fruit. They would eat vegetables. They eat leaves. Glory to God. That's what they did. Even the lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, they also ate fruit. And this is what they did. We, we forget sometimes the things that, that, that God had done. And watch this. God made all of this before he made us. He made the animals before us. He made the fish before us. He made the, the, the fowl in the air before us. And some of them fowl that can't fly. He made them before us. And I sat there and I was reading. And I said, when he said, let us make man in, in, in our likeness, in our image, it, it was indicating that God took counsel of himself. He took counsel of his own wisdom, the word of God. He took counsel in his own virtue, the spirit of God. There's a the, the triune God. He took counsel. God said when he, he couldn't find nobody to swear by, he swore by himself because he's sovereign. He, he's self-governing. There's nothing you can do about it. God's not going to move until he wants to move. God's he just not. Amen. I was praying about something today and I said, I already know that you're going to do it because the word of God says so. But you're going to move when you want to move. Amen. And, and I'm not going to stress about it because you said you would do it. I'm just going to wait. Amen. And you're going to do it in my lifetime. So I'm just going to wait. For those of you that are getting impatient with God because it didn't happen last year, you don't know what God has in store for you in 2024. You don't have a clue on what's coming your way. But if you quit and you forget about the one who's birthed you and whose you are 
You're going to lose out so much of the joy and the peace and the happiness and the, and the promises that God has for you. It is his desire to give you the entire kingdom. This is what the Bible says. Bless God. He said, now I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to, to make this man, but he's making everything, mind you, God said that he made is good. That's what he said. Praise God. But it was something different about what he wanted to make man. He, he was different from all the other creation. Here we see El Shul, nature of God, the one who birthed the human race. There's not races. The human race was birthed by God, period. There's no races. If there are races, that means that somebody else birthed the other races. But God here in the garden of Eden, Eden was a place. There was a garden in Eden. People keep saying that the garden of Eden was just a garden. No, that Eden was an entire place. Bless the name of the Lord. And, and, and he said, he birthed them, human race, create. I looked up the word create, and create means to bring something into existence. So when we say to Elohim, created me a clean heart, he brings that into existence. Can I ask God to give me a clean heart? Yes, because that's what David said when he messed up in, in I believe it's Psalm 51. He said, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I done messed up. But I'm coming to you. This is why David was a man after God's own heart. Because David knew how to repent and not repeat. When David came to the Lord and asked for forgiveness, he didn't keep sinning. And this is what I try to explain to folks. Yes, God will forgive you for your sin. But you can't stay in your sin and keep asking God to forgive you for sinning that you keep repeating. Amen. Because it's null and void because you're not turning from that sin. And God wants us to be a holy people. He wants us to be a righteous people. And he never told you it was going to be easy, but it's not going to be hard. You just have to make up in your mind. Who do I want to serve? Where do I want to spend eternity? Who do I want to make happy? Who do I want to make smile? I want to make God happy. I want to make God smile. And I want to spend eternity with him. That's the, that's the way it should be. So he said, create means to bring something into existence. Make means to form something, put it together. And I love the way God did this. God formed man. He put him together out of the dust of the earth. Then he created in him by breathing into him and he created a living soul. So God was both the former and not former as in the past, but the one who formed and the one who created. He, he People think form and create is the same thing, but it's not because he took the dust and he formed. It was The dust was there. He formed man. But then he, he turned around and, and created something on the inside, that living soul, that, that, that seed of his emotions where he could smell, he could see, he could understand. All of these things he could feel, he could taste. He, he gave him all of these things. He gave him emotions where he could laugh. Glory to God. There, I, I'm telling you, I believe with everything I got that Adam and, and God laughed at some things. They could have been laughing concerning the animals and laughing about something else. And Eve was laughing. I believe God laughs because the Bible says he laughs, but you don't want him to laugh at, laugh at your calamity. That's the name of Jesus. So, so we're unique because he was. we were birthed by God. He made the body and created the soul. We are unique in creation. And we came out, and this is, this is what I love. We came out of the very thought of God. God had, now, now, now hear me carefully. God has always been. And we came out of the very thought of the one who has always been. We have all, as long as God has been God, we have always been in his mind. We have not been an afterthought in the mind of God. God knew when he was going to let us come forth. He knew where we we're going to be. He knew who our parents were going to be. He knew our lineage, even though some of us don't. Amen. He knew exactly how he's going to bring this thing forth ever since he's been God. He waited for however long he waited before he did it because he's God and got it like that. And he'll do what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Amen. Bless God. He says, listen, we are a unique creation made by the thoughts in the hands of the great I am. When, when we come to God through Jesus Christ, we are birthed into his kingdom. 
That's the new birth. That, that's when we say we are born again. Amen. Praise God. We become kingdom kids, if you will. So regardless of what comes your way or how it, you know, people come against you or things come against you, you got to remember who birthed you. Who you, you are inheritance of God. You are God's child. Not like everybody else, but you are not the children of disobedience. You are, if you're born again and have a personal relationship with a personal God, you, my God, you, you have been birthed into his family, the family of the living God. We got family in, 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 in glory that we ain't never met. Praise God. There are things that Jesus did that, that went amongst his disciples that we'll never know about unless he tells us when we see him. Amen. There are things the Bible said, if, 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 the, if he would have written all the things that Jesus had did with his disciples, he said, the word of God said, the world itself couldn't hold all the things that Jesus did. So we don't know everything, but he gives us just enough to know that I am your El Shul and I will, I will bring you into a new birth. If you let me, let me birth you. And, and when he births you, he don't want you to have no other God. This is what it says in Psalm, Psalm 139, verse 14. I'm in the Geneva Bible. King James is the closest. It says, I will pray. This is David. I will praise thee. Look at this. For I am fearfully and wondrously made. Marvelous are thy works. And my soul knoweth it well. Fearfully, when translated from the Hebrew, means with great reverence or heartfelt interest. When God formed man, he did it in a, in, a, in a very reverent way. He did it with his heart. His whole heart was poured into it. Remember, everything else he said, let it be, let it be, let it be, bring forth, let it be. But he took his time and he put his hands in this and he formed us, praise God, because we were unique. We're uniquely designed. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. God took time with us. This is why it's a sin to kill another individual. I don't care what they did. Amen. It's a sin to kill another individual because they, this, is, this is something that God took time. He, it was heartfelt in his, in his own heart. He felt this thing when he began to create man. Fearfully, wonderfully made. And, and, and wonderfully meant translated was that you were set apart because you're unique and we're set apart from everything else that God made. We're not birds. We're not fish. Amen. We're not little creeping things. Although sometimes, amen, we're not little creeping things. Bless the name of We are uniquely made. We're uniquely designed. We have the breath that that signature of God on the inside of us that put a soul on the inside of us that made us different from everything else that God had made. Everything that had life. But we were uniquely designed because it was out of his heart, out of his, his reverence. I mean, when God reverences something, come on now, he, he put it together nicely and neatly. And, and, and so we were made to honor God, to praise God, to worship God. And then when we act outside of what we're designed to do, then we become disobedient and rebellious. And then we're headed for judgment. Then this takes us to another part of God's nature called El Day. And Day is spelled D-E-A-H. El Day. It's, it was El Day, the God of knowledge, who spoke to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 and 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5 Geneva Bible, it says, I love this. Jeremiah, I don't know what Jeremiah was thinking a lot of times because he was a kid. And, and God was, was hitting him with some really heavy stuff. So he, he hit him with something real heavy here. God says, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations, not the races, but to the nations. This is what he said. Hold up, wait a minute. Before you formed me, they, I wasn't nothing. I, I wasn't there. I was just a thought. But God said, I, yeah, you are a thought. 
And I knew just what I was going to do with you because I knew what kind of heart you were going to have. And I knew what I knew that you were going to have a moment where you said you weren't going to say nothing again. But then that fire started burning on the inside of you and you changed your mind about it. I already knew that. So before you were even born, I already sanctified you because I knew your heart. I, and somebody said, well, that ain't fair because, you know, God sanctified him. How come he ain't sanctified me? Because he know your heart. Sometimes we just have to say, God, because you, when, when you look back, if, if y'all would be honest, and look back over your life before you actually knew God. I mean, you knew of him, but really had a relationship with him. God could have took you out then. In certain situations, he could have took you out, but he knew your heart. He knew that eventually you're going to come and give him your everything. Bless God. He said, now, he said, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. And before you came out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. Then again in Jeremiah 29 and 11, some of y'all love this one, really. For I know, and, and I don't use the word plan. I don't use the new version. It says, for I know, meaning that he's knowledgeable and aware, the thoughts that I Think towards you, or I have thought towards you, saith the Lord, even thoughts of peace and not of trouble to give you an end and your hope. This this is a good thing for all of us. Before we before our man, before anybody was born, God already knew what he had for us to do. Now that is presented to us and that we know what it is. We, we can rebel against it if we want to. And it's a consequence that comes with it. Jeremiah said, I don't say nothing else. They whooped me. And I'm not saying nothing else. I got beat up for this. I'm not saying nothing else. I'm going to hold my peace. But then he said it was like fire. When, when the word of God gets into you and you got to tell folk what has to be, you can try to hold your peace or all you want. There are things that I never wanted to teach, never wanted to talk about because there's so much controversy on it because the church is so jacked up. Praise God. We followed the way of the world and, and, and so now it's incorporated in church and now folk got all kinds of stuff going on and I don't like to deal with certain things but when God says speak, you gotta speak. I'll dream about it. I'll stay up late at night because it's all in my mind. I can't seem to get past it. I say, okay God, this is what I'm gonna do. Lose some friends along the line. Okay. Lose some folks along the line. Okay, but they're going to hear the truth. And he said, listen, he said, I know the thoughts. I know what I'm thinking about you. And then in, in Psalm 138, verses 7 and 8, Psalm 138, 138, verses 7 and 8. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, David said, yet wilt thou revive me. Thou will stretch forth thine hand upon the wrath of my enemies and thy right hand shall save me. Verse 8. The Lord will perform his work toward me. O Lord, thy mercy endure forever. Forsake not the works of thine hand. For some people that's going to say, well, you know, that's good. I hear what you're saying, preacher, but that had to do with David. And that had to do with Jeremiah. It ain't got nothing to do with us. Okay, let's turn to 1 Peter 1.17. 1 Peter 1 and 17. And this is what was said. And if you call him father, talking about God, the great I am, which without respect of persons judges with, this is God, has no respect of persons, judges according to every man's work, pass the time of your dwelling here in fear. If, if here's the thing. If the same God has no respect of persons when it comes to judgment, then that same God has no respect of persons when it comes to the blessing of his own. What he said to Jeremiah goes for us too. He knew us before we were in the wombs of our mothers. He knew this. He understood this. He was well aware of what we were, what we were going to be, what we were going to do, how we were going to do it, and when we were going to come to him. He knew this. Even those that have been birthed, he knew. He's praying that he, he's he's he's. What is the word? He's he's waiting for them to come to, to, to them. The Lord is interceding for them to come to him. But there's some people that are just not going to come until the tribulation. 
And then there's something that's still not going to do it. And they're going to come through the millennium and they're going to live all right. But as soon as Satan is loose after the thousand years, they're going to still follow him. So there's some folks who are just going to be doomed. And the Lord knows it and it breaks his heart. But he gives them a chance. Somebody said, well, why let him be born? Because he's God when you see him asking. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. He has no respect of person. The same God. Because he's a true um, father, he doesn't play favoritism. So we've been given life by El Shay, and he will never forsake the works of his hands, which we are. He created and made us and gave us life for his purpose and his glory. El Shay is the life giver. El Shul, the one who birthed us. El Day, the one who knows all about us. They all work together as the nature of God. It's like this. The living God gives us life. The shul is willing to birth us into the kingdom and give us new birth. Then he'll never leave us or forsake us. Praise God. And then through Jesus Christ, our Adonai, we come to the day. El day. Praise God. He's the one that knows everything about us before, after, and in between. Praise God. Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, I'm trying to get through this tonight. Isaiah 49, 16, King James. Behold, I have great, my God, my God. Behold, this is God speaking. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hand. The walls are continuing, thy walls are continually before me. God said, you're in, I got you engraved in the palms of my hand. Do you know how many people have lived on this planet? He got them in the, he knows who they are, whether good, bad, or indifferent. He said, I got you in the palm of the, I got you. And those of you that, that are saved, he said, I got you engraved in the palm of my hands. I'm not going to forget you. I know that you're there. I'm not forsaking the works of my hands because you're engraved in my hand. I see that. I even see the walls that you have. I'm watching. He said, yeah, but that wasn't for, it is for us. And that's where we miss out. We don't gravitate to the blessings that God gives us, but let some folk, fake prophet come in and say, you know, God said, and then we'll run behind that. We don't spend so much money and thousands, hundreds, thousands of dollars on people that say they're of God because there's no discerning of spirit or you see it and you don't care. One way or another, we got duped. Somebody said we got bamboozled. But you allow yourself to get tricked because the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And somebody just disagreed with me, but that's okay. Amen. He says, he says in Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, this is what Jesus said. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. This is what Jesus said. All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. If I'm a joint heir, like my, 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 my. What is it? My, my shoulder has joints to, to the rest of my arm because I'm not a doctor. I can't think of the names right now. But there's a connection. I'm a joint heir. I'm part of the body. If I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ and all power was given to him in heaven and earth, then I got some power. You got some power. You have some authority. But we don't use it because you can't use when you don't know the nature of God. You got to know what you, what, what listen, what am I inheriting? When I, when I became an heir of God, what am I inheriting? I, who is God? What is his nature? What can I ask for? What should I leave alone? This is why you learn the nature of God. This is why it is important for us to know what's in God's names. What's in God's names is his nature. It's the character. It's who he is. It's his divine order of himself. That's who this is. He said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Then he tells us, go ye therefore and teach all nations, not all races, but all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever have I commanded you. Everything that I commanded you, everything that I taught you, you teach them. And if they disobey you, they're not disobeying you, they're disobeying me. See, when people come up against you when you're teaching the word, they're not coming up against you. They're going up against God because God's word is not going to change because they don't like you. And you have to understand that. I told one of the sisters, I said, you got to get out your feelings. You and your feelings too much. This one hurt your feeling. That one hurt your feeling. Oh, how come they did? Stop that nonsense because you don't stress yourself out. And stress is not of God. When they reject you, know this. Okay, fine. And keep it moving. This is what God has planned for us. 
So he said, this is what I want you to do. And this is what God promised. He said, and lo, mm -hmm, I am, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. So be it. El Shay, the living God, is always with those who have a personal relationship with him. God, the personal God, amen. El Shul is waiting for all the people that will come to him. He won't turn them away. He's waiting to give them new birth. As El Day, he knows our heart. He knows everything about us. And he's willing, glory to God, to, he's given his life. Praise God, so that we can have a right to the tree of life. Glory to God. And right now, El Day is thinking about us. Amen. When you're not thinking about your own self, the Lord is thinking about you. He's always thinking about you. Watch this. Those of you that are not saved, God is still thinking about you because he loves you and he wants you to come to him. And there's thoughts that he has concerning you. He wants you to be part of him. He wants you to, 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 to be a part of the family. This is what the Lord wants. Bless the name of the Lord. And we got to get back to the situation where we start doing what God wants us to do, whether people like it or not. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Like I said, I lost some people that say they were my friends and say they were my sister and I was their mother and all this other stuff. Amen. And it's okay because I, I, I can't sugarcoat the gospel just to keep friends. I can't sugarcoat the gospel just to get money. I, I, I just, just to be famous, just so people can come and ask for me. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat the gospel for that, praise God, because that's not fair to God. After everything that the Lord has done for us, everything that he's been for us, he's been our El Shea, he's been our El Shul, he's been our El Day. Praise God. He's been good to us, and we need to honor him in, in, in the nature that he's in. Praise God. Honor the who, who God is. What's in God's name? His character is in his name. The authority that we get is in his name. When we pray, think about what you're going before God with. Are you going to the one that knows all things? Are you going to the I am, the self-existent one? Are you going to him because you need him to fight your battles and you need that banner flag? What, 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 what are you going before him with? And, and, and then some of us need to do like Hezekiah did. Hezekiah got that letter and he took it and he put it before God. If you got a place in your home that, that's sacred to you, amen, where you can post things, you put, Lord, this is the bill. You told me not to owe, so I need your help. I didn't, I didn't, this wasn't something foolish. It's just that my money got funny because of, of what was going on with COVID and it ain't got straight yet. So God, here this is. God, I wrote this down because this is the persons that have come against me. I'm not asking you to kill nobody. I'm not asking you to put a pox on their house or put a plague on them. But God, this is the situation as they're coming against me because they don't have a clue on who they're dealing with. So here they are. And I'm putting it before you. God, here's my family. Every name from the top to the bottom. The ones that need you right now. The ones that need you. And the ones that are acting crazy. God, I put it all before you. You can do it. Hezekiah did it. And then he asked God, look at it. I want you to see it, God. I know that you do, but God, I want you to pay, pay, special, pay special attention to this. Please, God. And here they are laying before you. And you don't move it until God starts dealing with it one by one. He'll save some. He'll remove some. Unfortunately, some going to die. But whatever the situation, as God begins to move, you check it off. God, I need you to do this. This is not just a want. This is a necessity. This is a necessity. This too is a ne So now as God begins to do it, you check it off. And then as you check it off, then you begin to thank God. God, if you did that, you'll do this. And because I'm lined up with your word and I'm learning how to abide in you and let you abide in me, I can ask what I will as long as it lines up with your word. Tonight, know who God is. Get to know him. Now, I was I was laughing when I was talking to God about this. I said, God, we can go through knowing the person of God, what's in God's name, for the rest of the year. Because there's so many names. Ooh, there's so many parts to his nature that I'm not even going to touch uh, on this series. Praise God. Some stuff I may bring up every now and then. But there's so many names of God. Bless the name of Jesus. And, and there, there's... There's, there's 
It shows you his nature, his tenderness, his wrath, um, his judgment. It shows you how, how, I don't want to say important, but how much he loves us and how much he cares for us. That out of everything that he created, he made us different. He made us with a part of him, with a, if I, if I could say a thumbprint. We are imprinted by God. If that's not enough, I ain't got nothing. Father God, we come before you. We thank you for being all that. We glorify you that you're teaching us more about your character so that we can understand and that we can fear you because so many have fallen away from the truth to follow nonsense. Those that have turned away, God, somehow or another, bring them back. The people in the world are coming to you. I listened to Jim Carrey's testimony about you. I was like, well, there it is. God, people are coming to you that are in the world, that were in the secular. And people that are in the hip-hop were coming to you. And then the ones that don't come to you are telling on the devil. And Lord God, if we don't cry out, you will bring people out of the world to testify of you. Even if they don't get saved, they will testify about you. So God, in the name of Jesus, help us to be what you have birthed us to be. So that we can be utilized by you. We want to be active in you. We want to be usable to you. God, we don't want to be chaff. We don't want to be trash. We, when you sweep in house, we don't want to be swept out with the trash. So God, help us to be stable in our thinking, in our words, in our actions, and in our heart, in our minds, in the name of Jesus the Christ. And we give you glory. Now let your people sleep well tonight, knowing that the living God, the El Shea, is watching over them. And they can rest, oh God, knowing that you've got this under control. And whatever they may be going through physically, Lord God, we thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha or Yahweh Rophe. You heal. And we thank you for that, oh God. And we glorify your name. Now we ask, Lord, that you give them strength to stand under adversity. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, lift up a standard against them as the Jehovah Nisi in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory. We thank God for all of you that have come in. Amen. And those of you that get this later, and for those of you that slip in and I find out later, God bless you. Um, we pray that that you get something out of this and that these the names show you who you're dealing with, the character, the nature of the God that you say you serve. I pray that this brings you closer to him, that makes you more nosy about the who he is. And, and that you that you really let God begin to use you in whatever way that he desires to use you. And those of you that got problems, like I said, I'm praying that God gives us our neighborhood. Amen. And I'm just watching God. Praise God. And if you want your neighborhood, you tell God, I want my neighborhood. If you want your church to be delivered, then put that church on a piece of paper, put it before God and say, God, here it is. And this is what I want you to do for the glory of God. All of this that we ask, has to be something that's going to give God glory. Remember that when you ask him, ask with knowing that God is going to get the glory out of whatever it is that I do. If God can't get the glory out of what you do, then don't do it. That's as simple as I can make it. Amen. Tomorrow morning at 530, Lord, say the same. Bless the name of Jesus. We're going into praying again in the word. I'm stickler for the word, y'all. Like I said, if you don't want the word, you're fooling with the wrong ministry. If you if you don't want the truth, you're fooling with the wrong ministry. Amen. But we're going to give truth and we're going to do that until Jesus comes or Jesus calls us home. We're just going to stay in the word of God. God bless you, Sister Stanley. We ask also that you pray for Sister Laura. Amen. I call her my nurse. Glory to God. Um, she stuck by us when we were in revival and she's a trooper. Glory to God. She wasn't feeling well. So we ask that you keep her in prayer. Amen. That God works a miracle in her body. 
bless the name of God. We thank you for uh, everything he's done. I happen to look at something that said, Jeremiah 30 and 17, for I will restore health to you and heal you of, of your wounds, says the Lord. Amen. I didn't make this up. It just popped up. Amen. God said, I will heal you. He is Jehovah Rophe or Jehovah Rapha. Glory to God. God is good. God is kind. Lord, say the same. We'll see you tomorrow morning at um, 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. Listen, go over the names of God so you can get it in your spirit or write them down so when you're praying, you know what you need God to do. Amen. God bless and keep you always in my prayer. Thank you for your donations, your offerings, your tithes, whichever way you do it. Those of you that can use Zelle, those of you that can't use the, the cash app, and we thank God for you. You never hear me beg you for no money. If I make a request, praise God, you know it's going to be something that's going to be for somebody else. We thank you so much for everything that you've done so far and how we've been doing this for, I believe, now it's four years. Praise God. So keep us in prayer. Keep DJ and I in prayer that God continue to use us and so that, that we don't be lost. Amen. But he continues to use us to share the gospel to those that are lost and the rest of us. Amen. Have a great night. Sleep well, knowing that El Shea, the living God, is watching over you. <laughs>